My sweet cream frosting has a silky smooth texture, a beautiful glossy finish. It's not too sweet and it tastes like vanilla ice cream. Texture and heaviness wise, I would say it's between a whipped cream frosting and traditional European type buttercream, such as Swiss meringue buttercream. And it doesn't require any special ingredients, but rather takes advantage of some unique properties that are naturally found in common dairy products. And I'm gonna put these ingredients together in a very specific way. Now you may be wondering why Adriana, why another American buttercream? Well, the inspiration for this frosting comes from two things. First, some bakers tried my American Dreamy buttercream. I created that about a year ago and they said that was either too heavy or buttery not sweet enough. So I really wanted to try and fix that. And I've been thinking about creating a lighter yet stable frosting for a pretty long time. It probably started around last summer, but I could never get it to work. And as I was studying my dairy biochemistry throughout the year, I happened upon my second source of inspiration, which is this paper here. The authors were able to push their fat levels down really low into the 20s, around 20 to 24%. It's what they call a high internal phase emulsion. They're using it for really cool stuff like drug delivery. And so the purpose of this video is to answer the question, can I use the ideas in this paper to create a stable and lighter textured frosting without using high amounts of butter? So here's a graph of various fat content. And on the high end, there's Russian buttercream, then comes French, and then my current attempt at an American buttercream, then so meringue and ermine. And here's the frosting I'm going to show you today. And it averages around 25%. Now this may not seem like a huge drop, but whipped cream frosting lives around this pink arrow here. And I can't include it in this category of frostings because it's not technically a buttercream emulsion, but it's so familiar to bakers that sometimes I like to think about it when talking about fat content. Now it's not entirely clear if I've been able to replicate exactly what they've done in this paper. I simply don't have the capacity and instrumentation to do so in my home kitchen, but it really served as the push I needed to know that it was possible to push those butter levels down really low so that I could get that light and pleasant texture that I was looking for if I just made a few changes. So to make this frosting, here's what you'll need. This is cold unsalted butter cut into two inch chunks, sweet cream buttermilk powder, cold whole milk divided into two parts, powdered sugar divided into two parts, and optionally you can flavor with vanilla and salt. And I'm going to explain what each ingredient is doing as we move along my process. Step one is to cream the cold butter and buttermilk powder together. This butter was sitting outside of the fridge for about 10 minutes and it's definitely still on the colder side. So with the whisk attachment, pulse on low speed until the buttermilk powder has been incorporated and the frosting starts to collect on the sides of the bowl. Then increase the speed to the highest setting and whisk for three minutes. Now, you may be wondering about the sweet cream buttermilk powder. This is a dehydrated form of the liquid byproduct of butter processing. It is different from the liquid cultured buttermilk that you may find in the refrigerated dairy section of your grocery store. That buttermilk is made by adding lacto-fermenting bacteria to skim or low-fat milk. The bacteria eats up lactose and creates lactic acid, which in turn coagulates or makes the proteins stick together in the milk. This creates a thick liquid with a tangy or sour flavor, has a pH around 4.5, and that's acidic. And I think when most Americans think of buttermilk, this is what they're thinking about. Sweet cream buttermilk is the liquid that drains off of butter when it is churned. That watery byproduct is thin, but sweet and cream flavored. It has a neutral pH. This is also really difficult to find in liquid form as it oxidizes fairly readily, but it's easy to buy as a powder. This is also very unique that in during the churning process, a special kind of fat called a phospholipid drains off into the liquid. This is an emulsifier, which gives sweet cream buttermilk a kind of superpower. Lots of ice cream formulas use sweet cream buttermilk powder as an emulsifier. And that's why this frosting unmistakably tastes like ice cream. And this buttercream is named sweet cream frosting because it really is a combination of all those dairy products that are created during the butter churning process. And in this first step, we're really taking advantage of those phospholipids in the buttermilk powder. By whisking on high speed, I'm aerating the butter as well as distributing those phospholipids and the milk proteins throughout the butter fat, which is going to help with emulsifying later on. Which brings us to the second step, which is to 
emulsify the first portion of cold whole milk into the butter mixture. Now what we're doing is building an emulsion. Butter is already an emulsion, so we're just gonna add into it. And we have to do this gradually, so be sure to add the milk in at least four parts, which I just eyeball, and I'll start by pulsing the mixer to make sure I don't splash the milk out, then gradually moving to higher speeds. And what you'll see is as you add warm milk to this frosting, it's going to take a little bit longer for the milk to fully mix in. And you'll want to mix it in fully before adding in the next portion. And here's how to tell. When the milk is not mixed in, you'll get what I call the washing machine, where the buttercream is broken into chunks. And it really looks like clothes spinning around inside a washing machine. When the milk emulsifies fully into the butter, the frosting will kind of catch and thicken. And instead of sliding around the bowl, it'll stick to the sides and it'll look more like frosting. Now, once all of the milk has been added in, I'll mix on high speed for one full minute. I use cold milk in this recipe because I don't want to increase the temperature too much so that it's soupy in the end. Now, whole milk is perfect because it contains the right amount and right type of fat. Milk fat and butter fat, by the way, are interchangeable terms for fat derived from dairy, and those are contributing stability as well as emulsifying properties. Remember those phospholipids I was talking about earlier with the buttermilk powder? Milk has a little bit of those too. Whole milk also contains a fair amount of water, about 88%, and that not only creates a lightness to this frosting emulsion, but also dissolves all of the sugar, which we're going to add next. Step three is to add the first portion of powdered sugar. And this we also have to add gradually. So here I have a one cup scoop and I'm going to add about a cup every time and mix it in until I can't see any sugar and then add the next scoop. Once it's all added, I'll mix it again at high speed for a minute. This emulsion building technique is based on my sugarology method where I have a sugar syrup that I usually heat and then add butter to emulsify. I really wanted to branch off that idea and try to create something a little easier because I know that making a syrup can be intimidating and time consuming. So here I'm doing something very similar. The main difference is because I've increased the amount of emulsifiers, especially from the buttermilk powder. I don't have to do a cooking step to evaporate the excess water. In other words, my emulsion is able to hold more water than before. Additionally, I've combined the syrup making with the emulsifying process. And by using powdered sugar, it's able to dissolve more readily while at the same time emulsifying into the butter mixture. And here is where I instruct you to do a checkpoint. I wanna make sure that your buttercream looks the same as mine does here because it's easier to fix at this point. Should be thick, creamy yellow from the butter fat and have no traces of sugar or milk at the bottom of your bowl. If it looks runny, you may need to chill the buttercream because that might mean that the butter was too warm when you started. So you can just place the bowl of the buttercream in the fridge for about 10 minutes to get a slight chill on the bowl then try mixing it again until it thickens up and looks like mine. I also want you to give it a taste at this point. It should taste like an amazing American buttercream but slightly smoother because because of this emulsion technique. But this is a little thick and sweet for me. And really what makes my sweet cream frosting special is the ability to hold more liquid to bring those two things down. So I'm gonna add more milk, which is step four. And this is the second portion of cold whole milk. And it's the same thing as step two. The only thing is that it's gonna take a little bit longer for each addition of the milk to mix in fully. After all the milk has been added in, mix on high speed for one minute. Step five is to add the second portion of powdered sugar. Now this is optional as the buttercream is already perfectly sweet for me, but I'm going to go ahead and add this so you know what it looks like when it's totally maxed out on sugar. And this is a smaller amount, so I usually just add half and then mix it in and then the other half and then mix on high speed for one minute. Now this isn't a traditional American buttercream, so don't try to add more sugar than what my recipe says. In traditional non-emulsion based American buttercreams, when you add more sugar, it becomes stiffer. And that's because the sugar is not dissolving in anything. And what's really happening is that you're shoving solid sugar crystals into butter fat. There's really no upper limit to how much sugar you can add. Adding sugar to this buttercream has the opposite effect in that it becomes runnier. It contains more liquid Liquid, so sugar that is added will want to dissolve in that liquid, increasing the bulk of that part of the emulsion, 
and the buttercream emulsion can break. And step six is the last, and it's to adjust for color and texture. This buttercream is naturally cream colored, which I think is actually quite pretty, but if you prefer a whiter buttercream, I'm going to add the smallest speck of purple gel to cancel out the yellow and orange tones to whiten it out. And using a whisk is great for emulsifying, but it does introduce a bunch of air pockets. So switch to the paddle attachment to smooth out the buttercream for about two to three minutes before smoothing it onto the cake. And here Here's the finished frosting. This is at room temperature and it's got the nicest texture for frosting onto a cake. Now you may notice that it slides around the inside of the bowl like this and that's normal because this buttercream is only about 25% fat. So the majority of this frosting is milk and sugar and all the other things that make up the water-based portion. That's gonna slip around the bowl because it's less sticky than fat. But even though we added all of that, you can see here that the frosting is still quite sturdy and has body. And speaking of sturdiness, here is how it does on a large layer cake. This is an eight inch cake. And because it's a sweet cream frosting that is reminiscent of vanilla ice cream, kind of like a whipped cream, I decided to do a black forest type cake. And so I used the frosting in between the chocolate cake layers along with some chopped cherries. I then proceeded with my crumb coat and placed that in the fridge for about an hour. I had to go pick up my kids from school and I came back and did the final coat with no problems. And what's amazing is that even though this frosting has less fat than whipped cream, it firms up in the fridge. Remember how I said earlier that milk fat and butter fat are interchangeable terms? They're the same types of fat molecules in all these dairy products. And the reasons why this frosting firms up versus whipped cream, which remains soft, doesn't have to do with the concentration of fat, doesn't have to do with the types of molecules, but rather the structure that these fat molecules form. And I feel like that's a really interesting video for an entirely different time that I might have to cover. Now for piping, be sure that the frosting is pretty cold because it does contain a low amount of fat and most of this frosting is already liquid. And so when it touches body heat, it tends to liquefy pretty quickly. Essentially all the things that make it melt in your mouth so beautifully also makes it a little tricky to pipe with if you have warm hands. Now earlier on when I was testing this recipe, I wanted to see how the frosting would hold up over time. So I made a large cake and I left it out overnight and it did pretty well. I did happen to put it in an area of the kitchen where the morning sun hits pretty hard and so the back of it kind of deteriorated, but the front that was out of direct sunlight actually did quite well. Overall, I think that this frosting is amazing, both in flavor and function, that I was able to get my fat levels so low yet maintain stability.